that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi says that he will have this donkey that he will fly with and he, and subhanallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi says ma'ahu kullu lisan he has every language with him every language with him i just heard you know last year or something uh, the, the japanese have got this device that you put on your shoulder and you walk around with it in your business you know daily activities and what you do is you speak and as soon as you speak this device will translate to whatever language you want and then they speak and then they want translate to whatever language they want so allahu alam i don't know if it if it means that he has some kind of other way of of talking to people he has that but it looks like he might have that device the next thing that jal does is comes to a people and says i am your lord they say how do you prove that you're, you're our lord he says okay he says the rain i'm gonna make it stop if he wants to make the sun come out because the clouds are, are, are gone, or if he wants to make the sun never shine over it because the clouds are going to be there, okay, he can do that. Now if you look at modern, modern technology, there, there's cloud seeding that some countries use. You send a jet with certain chemicals into the air, and they send these chemicals out, and you can create clouds. That is already out. The Jal will, will then tell those people that I'm your Lord, believe me. And people, people, you know what? People will be so dumbed down that they're going to believe in him as an actual God. They'll take him as a God. The Jal then, one of his powers is that he's able to cut a man in half and the two pieces fall down to two sides. Because he will say to the man, he say, he say, he will say that, uh, do you believe me? I'm, I'm your Lord. And he says that, um, believe in Lord. He said, what's what's the proof? He says, well, how about if I was to cut you in half, and then join you back again? And he'll have a whole crowd of people. So he said, go ahead then. So he points at him and he cuts him in half. Two halves fall as, aside, and the jal then walks between the two halves, comes back again, then points back at it. And the two halves join again, and the man starts laughing. Wow. Do you know that they've got right now technology with a laser that can actually cut a limb without having any blood pouring out? Do you know that this is going 20 years back, they've already made a laser that can cut off sound in a room? It's already available. So if you're in a nightclub, with a lot of sound, high sound, and you want to have a table here that you and your friends speak in silent, you know, with, with just you two there, you can have that laser that, that beams around you, and what it does, it cuts off all the sound, the nightclub sound of, you know, the, you're talking about the music that is at high decibel, it cuts it all out, and you can have a nice conversation sitting. Now, I don't know again, if, this, if he's going to have all that at his, at, his, at his hands, but you can see where this is going. He comes to a, to a Bedouin and he says, you're going to believe me, I'm your Lord. And he says, why should I believe you? I, I, you know, you're my Lord. Tell me how, why? He says, how about, he says this in front of a crowd. He says, how about if I was to bring your parents back alive? He says, really, seriously? It's okay. He says, bring them alive. You know, who would not want their parents to be alive? So he goes to their grave. The child goes to his grave. And then seemingly, he brings his parents back up from their grave. And they say to their child, Oh child, believe him, he is God. Now Rasulullah s.a.w. explained this. He said, he said, فَشَيْطَانَانِ يَتَمَثَّلَانِ There will be two devils that will take the appearance of his parents. So his real parents are dead. But two, two, two devils have taken the appearance of two humans, exactly like his parents, and the devils speak out, and the person believes it's his parents, and therefore he believes. There's going to be a lot of trickery he will use. In fact, his name, Dajjal, means the one who is a master at lying and a master at trickery. He will fool people. He will walk. When he walks, he will have two rivers with him. Now, we, haven't, we have got nothing to, to understand this right now, but very soon, I'm sure in a few decades time, whenever the time is going to come, we're going to see, ah, we can understand how this is going to happen. He's going to have with him fire and he's going to have with him water. 
But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, his fire is water and his water is fire. So he will tell people, look, jump into the water. Don't jump into the fire. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, if you ever see Dajjal with his fire and water, he said, go and jump into the fire. Because his fire is going to be cool water. And how many of us, now this is a serious question, am I going to be ready to jump into real fire that's blazing, that's hot? Am I seriously going to jump in there with Iman and say, my Prophet Sallallahu told me that this is going to be water? Am I going to be doing that? This is a serious question. Because people are not prepared for the Dajjal, unless you have Iman. Unless you have Iman. And the Dajjal will mesmerize people. So he comes, his first day, his, which is one year, he goes around pretty much the whole of the world. He can't enter Makkah, Medina. Some riwayats say there's a Masjid Al-Tur, and there's also Masjid Al-Aqsa, some include that. But, but many ahadith include Makkah and Medina, because there are angels there guarding the, the, you know, those, those um, cities, and he can't enter that. But he will come to the outskirts of Medina. Rasulullah sallallahu even pointed out that in the outskirts of Medina, there's going to be a white, white palace or a car. He said a white building. He said a white building. Okay. Do you know right now, do you know right now that the current Saudi government is building a palace on the exact spot that the Jal was, is, is going to come to? And he's going to stand there and he's going to look at Medina and say, you know, the white city. If you look from that spot towards Medina Munawwara, okay, with all the lights at night time, it actually looks like a white city. So he comes and stops there. He's not able to enter. He's not able to enter Makkah Medina. But he's going to go pretty much around the world. And what he does is, he says, you believe me as a God. If you don't believe in him, fine. He's going to cut off your supplies of food, grain, whatever it is. He's going to completely destroy all your crops that you basically can't grow anything. He's going to have that technology. Do you know right now that there's a movement to try and only give you, you know, only give you a seed to grow one, things once, all right? And, and if that is fully fledged system, and if that comes in his hands, then he's got the way to say that you can't have food for the rest of the year. Now you've got a whole year to live. And Sahaba was struck. And they said, Messenger of Allah, how do we survive without food for a year? And this is a serious question. Will you seriously say no food for one year? One year. And if you look at the hadith, I said to you, it's one year, two and a half months, the Jal will be around. So are you ready to survive without any food for one year, two and a half months? And the Sahaba said, how do, how do we survive? And the Prophet ﷺ said a beautiful thing, which we need to do a lot right now, guys. This is the only way you're going to survive through the times that we're living in. He said, your food that day will be a tasbih wa tahleel. He said, your food that day is going to be subhanallah and la ilaha illallah. Your food that day is going to be remembering Allah. And if you don't believe in him, He's going to punish you. And the punishment, like I said, فَشَرُّغَا ibn يُنْتَظَرُ The one of the worst of the most evil, you know, awaited things that he, when he comes around. And the Dajjal will have a large following. Large following. And he will mesmerize the world with his power. And what are we supposed to do? If the Dajjal comes. The Prophet ﷺ gave us, you know, our protection. Now Rasulullah has told us, Surah Kahf. In one narration it says, whoever recites Surah Kahf on Friday, he will have, you know, from one Friday to another Friday, you're going to get a lot of light. And many ahadiths say that it's the first 10 ayats of Surah Kahf or the last 10 ayats of Surah Kahf. And some have said first 10 and last 10, whichever, it doesn't matter, or maybe both. And one narration says, if you memorize the last 10 ayats of Surah Kahf, you're safe from the Dajjal. In one narration it says, if you see the Dajjal, then straight away read the first 10 ayats of Surah Kahf, and you'll be protected.